Hi there, thanks for checking out this video. We'll be looking at my favorite, I guess you could call them top five programming fonts. Now I get quite a few comments and asking me what my current font is, what my theme is, and a variety of other different things about my development environment. The thing is my development environment isn't anything special, but I do experiment quite a bit with some different fonts. I find fonts personally to be somewhat important to the development experience because it does mean you are going to be looking at this font for approximately six to eight hours of a working day. So to me, it does make a difference and I have invested in some expensive fonts. I've invested in some not so expensive fonts and I've used some free fonts extensively. So it really doesn't matter what font you use at the end of the day, it really comes down to what your personal preference is. It's not about how expensive a font is, and if a font is expensive, it's up to you to determine whether that makes a difference in your life. For a lot of people, they can't justify the investment for some of the fonts we're going to look at, such as the first one, Operator Mono, but for others, it will seem justifiable. It's entirely up to you and your personal preference. With that said, let's jump in and take a look at the first font that I just mentioned, Operator Mono. So Operator Mono, you'll find that I do use it quite often in the videos on this channel, and it comes in at around 200 USD. I bought it myself, I wasn't given it by the company, I wasn't sponsored, I'm not sponsored by any of the fonts inside of this video, but it is something that I have found to be pleasant, it has a distinct cursive style, it has custom ligatures, and so on. You can see, of course, the video for this font inside of the channel or on this article, but we can also take a look at the website to see numerous examples. So here we have the site and some examples of Operator Mono in action. We can see that it does have this distinct cursive style, and I find it genuinely pleasant to look at, but it is quite a polarizing font. We will see some examples in just a moment of some people who don't like Operator Mono as much. So here we have an example of what makes this font so polarizing. A lot of people like the font, a lot of people don't like the font, and I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that it has such a high price tag. At the end of the day, you're making a font choice because it affects you and it's something that you're interested in, not the opinion of others. Perhaps a little less controversial is going to be our next font, which will be Fira Code. It supports ligatures once again, and it's derived from Fira Mono. Fira Mono is a type space created by Mozilla, and we can take a look at that just now. Here's some examples of the Fira type space itself, but if we scroll down to the bottom, we have Fira Mono in both its regular, medium, and bold aspects. So Fira Mono in itself doesn't support font ligatures, but if we take a look at Fira Code, we can scroll down and we can see the different ligatures in action, such as these arrows, these cross through not equals, and so on. We also have a side-by-side -side comparison between Fira Mono itself and Fira Code with the ligatures. For a full review of Fira Code, you can of course check out the video on the article and on the channel, which looks at Fira Code in more detail. Next up, one of my more recent favorites is Cascadia Code, and this one was created by Microsoft and is used in the new Windows terminal. You will be happy to know that this one is free, it's open source, and of course it has the SIL open font license, allowing for free use, providing you don't sell it separately. We can take a look at Cascadia Code, we can have a look at the picture here, which shows it in action, but if we check out the GitHub repository for this font, we can scroll down and we can see the source and where to install it. So for example, in order to install the latest version of Cascadia code, we can hit the releases tab and we'll be able to get Cascadia.ttf, Cascadia Mono and so on. Cascadia Mono is a version of the font that doesn't have the font ligatures. So if you don't like the ligature style, you can of course get rid of that using Cascadia Mono. Alternatively, you also have a Powerline version for terminal-specific fonts, which you can get from Cascadia PL. You may have seen this font used in some of my videos before. It is something that I'm a fan of. I often switch to it when maybe I'm getting sick of Operator Mono. Next up, we're looking at a font called Mono Lisa. This one is a little more affordable when compared to something like Operator Mono. The personal edition, which is essentially just the mono version of this font, comes in at 59 USD. 
we can take a look if we click the link inside of the article and we scroll down to see the various different things that make it different to fonts like Fira Code. We also have a playground here at the bottom of the page which allows us to see what Mono Lisa looks like in a variety of different languages, as well as comparison to things like Fira Code, Source Code Pro, and JetBrains Mono, which we'll be looking at next. When it comes to purchasing the Mono Lisa font, we can of course look at the personal edition that gives us the regular and bold package. That one comes in at 59 GBP, down from 69, and I would say it's relatively affordable, but of course, if you don't spend money or don't want to spend money on fonts, then it probably isn't a purchase I'd recommend. I'd like it probably using one of the free fonts, or perhaps the next one, JetBrains Mono, which we're going to look at after this. Alternatively, if you wanted the complete family, perhaps you're going to use this in a more professional sense, across numerous different applications or use cases, then of course you can look at the professional edition, which is 299 euros. This costs a substantial amount more, but of course you're getting all of the font styles. Personally, I would just buy the personal edition and use the Mono Lisa regular inside of your editor if you're interested in this font. The final font I'd like to recommend here is, of course, JetBrains Mono. This is a relatively new font coming out in around January 2020, so about four months from this video. It supports custom font ligatures and italics and, of course, is free. We can check out the JetBrains Mono site if we click the link. And as we can see, it's free, open source, and we can select the download font button if we want the font. It's as simple as that. We also have some stats here and some idea of what the font looks like. You can get some examples if we take a look when compared to Consolas. We also have some direct comparisons to things like Fira Code, Consolas and Source Code Pro, as well as numerous other key features, etc., which you can take a look at on the site yourself. If we scroll down to the bottom, you can see we have some recommended settings for this font, which is, of course, size 13 and line spacing of 1.2. It does ship in JetBrains IDEs from the version 2019.3, and I think it even is the default, if we scroll to the top, in the more recent versions. Finally, we can take a look at what it looks like in things like Kotlin, Java, Go, Python, and so on. So that's been the top five fonts, which I seem to be going backwards and forwards on in the last few months. There's a lot of things which I haven't mentioned here, such as Ubuntu Mono, Source Code Pro, Dank Mono, and many others. So those are my top five favorite fonts. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Let me know in the YouTube comment section below what your favorite font is and whether you think it's worth spending 200 USD on a font. I'd love to know your opinion and thoughts. See you soon in my next video.